Hello boys and girls. Today we're going to do lesson 2.4 which involves place value with calculators. Now the sheet that I have here um, that you're looking at currently is called a calculator change problem and basically what you're going to be doing in class is you're going to use a calculator to change the value of a number. For example, if we look at letter A we're starting with 570 and we're going to focus on the place value tens for this problem and what I want you to think about is how would we change the tens digit to a zero so I've got a change to column I've got zero place there so would I add or would I subtract If you said subtract or thought subtract, you thought correctly. So if we use subtraction to change that 7 to a 0, how much do we have to subtract? If you thought 70, you would be correct. So when we do that, that's going to change the value of our number. So now instead of 570, we now have 500. Let's look at letter B. We have the number 409. And I want you to figure out how would we change the hundreds column to an 8. Are we going to add or subtract? Remember, our number is going to get larger. So most likely we're going to add. So how much would we need to add to 4 to make it Eight. we would have to add 400 so now our new number would be 809 if we take a look at letter C we have the number 54,463 we're going to focus on the thousands place this time and I want that number to change to a 9 it is currently a 4 so what would we do to change that 4 to a 9? We're going from small to big, so we're going to add. How much do we add to 4 to get 9? We would have to add 5,000. So our new number would become 59,463. Let's take a look at letter D. We have 760,837. We're going to change the tens place to a zero. How would we do that? Subtract. How much would we subtract? you thought 30 you were correct. So our new number would be 760,807. Alright, what I would like to do now is show you the game Fishing for Digits. And this is one of your games that you're playing this week. Um, you'll see that the materials that you're going to need to play this game is your record sheet which you kind of see it's cut off here on the right side I'll show you a full picture in a minute um, but you need that record sheet you'll need one calculator for each player and this is a two player game so the object of the game is to have the largest number um, on your calculator um, once you have played five rounds um, so let's look at the directions here first each player is going to secretly enter a six-digit number into their calculator, but you cannot use zeros. So on your record sheet, you're going to record that number at the top, and you're not going to let your partner see what number you wrote. And then player one is going to go fishing, as they call it, for a digit. So it's kind of like the game Go Fish, except you're not using cards. You're fishing for numbers. So you might ask your partner, 
um, does your number have a 4? And they're going to tell you yes or no. Okay, so let's look at the rest of these directions. So if the digit named is one of your numbers, you're going to report the value of that digit. So, for example, if they had asked you if you had a 4 and you said yes, you would say, I have a 4 and it's worth 400 or it's worth 40, depending on what place it's in. So you'll report the... Um, Oh, also, if you have, uh, like, let's say that your number has two number fours, um, the, the digits that you're going to give them is the one that is worth the most, okay? So they're giving you the example if player one names the digit seven and player two's number is 987,675, then player two would report the value 7,000 rather than the value 70 because you're going to give them the larger one. So what you're going to do is you're going to add that value of that digit to your number. So what that means is you have a number entered on your calculator already that you picked. Um, if your partner guesses um, part of your numbers by one of the digits, then depending on whose turn it is, you're going to add the value of that digit to your number or subtract the value of that digit from your number. So if the digit named is not one of the digits, then you're going to both add, well, player 1 will add 0 and player 2 will subtract 0. So it really is not going to change your number, but you still have to enter it on your record sheet. If we look at step five, it says it is now player two's turn to fish. Reverse the roles of player one and two and repeat steps two, three, and four. When each player has fished once, the round is over. The player whose calculator displays the larger number at the end of five rounds is the winner. So let's look at an example here at the bottom. Player 1's calculator shows 813,296. Player 2's calculator shows 328,479. Player 1 asks, do you have the digit 4? Player 2 replies, yes, the digit 4 is in the hundreds place. Player 1 adds 400. So they're going to take their number that they have in their calculator and they're going to add 400 to it and then they have a new number. Player 2 is going to subtract 400 and now they will have a new number and that just continues. So that would be one round once each player has a turn. So your record sheet looks like this. So you're going to write your number, your six digit number at the top So let's say that I had seven, two, six, four, nine, three. So that was my starting number in my calculator. And then each time you go, so if I'm player one and I ask player two if they have a number, then I'm going to add or subtract the value of that number from, from this. And so each time I add or subtract, I'm going to record a new number here, okay? So you'll do that um, each time, and then you're going to play five rounds of that game. So remember, the player that has the larger number in their calculator at the end will be the winner. All right, to summarize what we've talked about today, um, We've looked at using place value um, in calculators, and we learned uh, how to play the game Fishing for Digits. Now, my advice when you go to play that game is to have your SRB next to you because the directions are a little confusing, and I understand that, so it's not going to hurt to have the directions right there so you can look back at them. Write down any questions that you have, and I will be more than happy to help you in class. Thank you.